everybody, Mike Griffith here. Welcome to tonight's KM Squared. It's Kendall Milton and Kenny McIntosh. And Kenny McIntosh and Kendall Milton, we're going to try and make sure they got equal reps here. Camp has started. There's going to be a lot of competition at running back, a lot of competition at all the positions. And that's what happens in Georgia. They recruit a lot of great players where they say iron sharpens iron. And it all starts tomorrow. They just finished up. The voluntary off-season workouts, you know, you hear the phrase is voluntary off-season workouts. You think, ah, maybe these guys go in the weight room and lift for a couple hours a day. Uh, but, but you talk to them and you hear, you hear from them and there's more involved than that, Kenny. Take me through an average voluntary workout day at Georgia. Well, uh, average voluntary workout day will um, consist of us, of course, working not. Um, but it's really like the, the, the stuff we do. Um, after the workout, um, the overtime and watching film, putting extra time in the playbook, um, and really just taking care of your body throughout the, the, the time that you have to prepare your body that you so that you don't get injured throughout the season. So it's really just a mindset, really. Um, in football, of course, you're going to have to work out to pre prevent injuries, but um, it's just the extra time that you put in that's going to make you a uh, better player and it, just putting in extra time in the training room can can take you another step farther than where you're doing now. So the volunteer workouts was pretty much like that throughout the whole season. Uh, what you would say, Kendall? Uh, yeah, no, like <clears throat> like Kenny said, uh, volunteer workouts, you know, you have workouts in the morning, but it's mainly about the, the extra time you put into it, the film sessions, the taking care of your body and, you know, I'm practice on top of that with the meetings and everything. And it's just a whole bunch of things that's just back to back to back. And, you know, you, at the end of all of that, you have to get in the uh, training room. You got to get in the film room, you know, it's, it's doing those extra things. to I would say set yourself ahead. So uh, it's definitely a long day, but um, we make the day longer by doing the things we need to, to be able to, you know, be successful in this game in terms of keeping your body healthy and things like that. What, what time do you, I mean, what time does a day start? I mean, as far as how that works, I mean, I know that, like you said, it's long days, but how early is the wake up call? Well, for, well, I, I'm going to take off. Well, for me, um, I usually wake up um, around like seven 30. Uh, but the times for us to be there, we have lift groups. We have different times. Um, some of us have like school work to do. Now that as we getting over that, we just focus on football now, but um, in the volunteer workout, I work up at 7.30, go do my schoolwork, and then go straight to workouts. And then by that time, I have free time to get recovery. I have time to go watch film, a little bit more film. I have time to go, you know, even go run a little bit more if I feel like I need, you know, I'm not out of shape a little bit. So um, just the volunteer time, it really gives you, the volunteer work, I mean, it really gives you a lot more time to yourself to, and it's really up to you what you're going to do with it, so. I'll say for me, uh, my day usually starts, you know, during camp usually starts around uh, between six o'clock and six thirty, just because I like to, you know, get up early and get in the training room, get the breakfast and everything, just get my day started the right way, have everything prepared and ready. So for when it's time for the meetings or it's time for walkthroughs or time for workouts, there's no question I'm already prepared for it. So I like to, you know, get ahead of it a little bit. You know, I've got to think it's tough. I've, I've got to think it's a grind. I got to think, you know, like everyone else, you guys have bad days. You know, I mean, it, it can't always be, you know, I know, I know everybody wants it 110 every day, but when, when you're having that kind of day or when you had that time sleeping or the alarm goes off, you know, I'll start with you, Kenny. What, what keeps you going? What keeps you pushing and, and, you know, not giving in and, and having that off day? What keeps you going? Well, I just know that um, it's bigger than me. Um, I have goals in my life that I want to succeed. I want to achieve. I got a family that I I, have, I want to look out for when I get older. To, you know, put them in positions that you know we we didn't have. Um, you know, opportunities like that when we was younger. So I feel like when days like that come around, or if I just feel myself down, or maybe a teammate or anything, so I I just try to bring them up or talk to myself and tell myself like, Hey, this, this is what you came here for. This is what you came here to do. So, you know, but I'm um, having, like I said, bringing, mentioning up my brothers again, having those brothers, they, they like kind of guided me and like, you know, showed me and taught me, told me that this was going to be, you know, one of these days will come. So to me, I feel like it's really just a mindset. This is what I came here to do. This is what I want to do. So 
you know, I don't really let that phase me. But, so I just keep my mind focused on the next play or what's ahead, what's in front of me. Yeah, for me, what keeps me going is family. I would say 100%. Um, I wake up and I just think about all the hard work my dad has put in, that my mom has put in. For me to be able to be in the situation that I'm in right now, um, I think of my brother and, you know, the because he's been through everything that I've gone through up to this point. So, you know, for me, it was like, if, if he can do it, then I can do it type of thing. And um, I would just say is that, like Kenny said, I want to be able to take care of family members when I'm older and, you know, be that lookout type of dude. And it's feeling of you just want to make your family proud at the end of the day. So you, you just want to, you just want to keep going. You just want to keep being great. And, you know, that stays in the back of my head all the time. And uh, it continues to motivate me even to this day. Uh, you guys checked into the conference center earlier this week. Uh, I, I know every year that's something that, that, you know, Kirby does. A lot of teams do that. Um, you know, to get everybody together. What's what's unique about that, Kenny? What are some things that you like about that and what makes it uh, different? Um, really just being around my brothers. Um, it's building that connection even, you know, stronger. Um, getting us, the you know, comfortable, I guess, with being uncomfortable. Like, we don't really know it, know each other or been around each other that long. Um, you know, some of the freshmen that come on, you know, just getting to know those guys and, building that bond that we need to, you know, be able to go far in this season, this upcoming season. Um, I feel like being in the hotel, checking in the hotels, allow us to all stay focused on one goal and keeping us, our minds set on that goal. So, you know, everybody on the same path to the, you know, what's the team goal, which is the national championship. So I think that's, you know, doing this is a great, great uh, two weeks, great blessing. No, I agree 100 percent with Kenny. Uh, coming in the hotels, the opportunity to kind of get away from the world in a sense, and you know, just focus on football, focus on the season, focus on just uh, building that connection with your brother. So when those hard times come on the field, and um, you know, the games at the toughest point, you know, you you look to your side and you, you see your brother, and you know he got your back and uh, you got his back, and it's just that bond that you know is built in times like these when we're in the hotel just together all day. Uh, you guys started fall camp on Friday. Um, obviously, that's a different phase than the voluntary off-season conditioning. What do you like about fall camp? What do you look forward to the most um, about the fall camp session? Well, for me, um, I missed out on spring. I've been injured, so I feel like just getting back on the field and having that ball in my hand again, just to, you know, just to feel that pit skin again. Um, I feel like Going into camp this year for me is going to be like, uh, I don't want to say a statement to prove, but like I feel like I have a chip on my shoulder, a bigger chip on my shoulder for missing that spring. I feel like going into camp is going to help me, you know, you know, get what I missed out on so that I can be, you know, my best for the season. So I really like camp. It really gets you fully developed on what's the expect next. So, you know, that's the best shape you can get into when you done with camp, you know what I'm saying? By the time you're done with camp, you feel like you can do anything. So what about you? Um, I'll say my favorite thing about camp, you know, it's just that opportunity to really prove yourself, really, you know, put your foot in the door and, you know, I'll say, say what you need to say. And it's, it's that time where it's a grind for everybody. Uh, every every school in the country does it. So, you know, there's no excuse for getting past anything. It's just time, like everybody calls it, it's the time to grind. And, you know, it's just a, an exciting time for me because, like you said before, we're in the hotels. Um, it's, just, it's just all of us together. Everybody's sore. Everybody's tired. But it's just that grinding together. Everybody just pushing harder and harder. And, you know, I just love to see it. I want you, I'm going to ask you guys to break down the running back room for me. Tell me what you like about each guy's game. And we all watch. You know, I'm, you know we see, obviously, James Cook catches passes. We see... Zamir looks like his physical specimen. Uh, you know, we saw a little bit about what Dejan could do last year against South Carolina. Looks like he runs low mm -hmm. to the ground. But when you look at your teammates, what do you like about the other running backs in the room? Zamir, I must be a fast. Kendall, I believe, I think Kendall is a, a strong running back. He's very, very powerful. I feel like it's very hard to bring him to the ground. He can catch at the backfield as well. Um, Zamir is another strong one. He when he put his foot in the ground and his head down, I feel like he can. It's, it's impossible to stop him. Um, Cook, 
He got nice vision. He got hands. He can hit the hole, get skinny whenever he needs to. He's fast. Um, Dejan remind me of DeAndre Swift, of how, how so small he is and how quick he is and how, how much power he got in the lower body. Um, it's just, you know, we got it all in that running back room. Uh, for me, if I was to explain it, starting off with Kenny, Kenny has a, you know, a real dangerous dead leg. It's one of those, one of those things that uh, one second as a defender, <clears throat> it'll look like he's, he's running one way, but he sticks that foot in the ground and, you know, he reverses field so quick and, you know, it's just hard for a defender to adjust to. Um, Zamir, I'll say, like Kenny says, Zamir, he's a very powerful back. Um, when he decides to go north and south, you know, he's, it's really good luck for a lot of defenders. You know, he's, he's coming downhill hard um, with James. James is one of those uh, running backs that, you know, his speed is, is, is un, it's not teachable. It's not something that you can train to get to. It's something that's just God given. And he has that ability to let it translate through the run game, through the receiving game. You know, as you see, uh, open field, it's hard for defenders to get an angle. Um, with De, with Dejan, um, he's similar to Kenny in the sense that he has a, a very strong dead leg. You know, he's, low to the ground, so he has that ability to make those quick cuts, but he's also, you know, he has, you know, crazy strong legs, so even when he's that low and a hold of him, you know, it's hard to bring him down, and, you know, it's crazy just uh, the variety of running backs we have. You don't usually see this many running backs on one roster, but mm -hmm. um, yeah, if we look at it as an advantage, you know, we could just keep rotating and rotating and rotating, and it's never a fall off, so, you know, it's a blessing to be in a situation like this with, you know, running backs like we have so obviously you two great running backs. Uh, you've watched a lot of other running backs uh, as you've grown up. Uh, Kendall, give me your Mount Rushmore of running backs. Um, I would say Bo Jackson, uh, Barry Sanders, um, Adrian Peterson, and that, that third slide is it's a tough, you know, situation for me because I grew up watching LaDainian Thompson a whole lot. So that was always somebody that, you know, I would say you know, I just loved watching him, you know, the little celebrations and all that. But I don't know. That, that last one, that's something that I'd have to really think on. So those first three, those are the first three that come to my mind every time, you know, that question comes up or a question like that comes up. But, you know, that, that last slot, you know, hoping that I'm going to fill that last slot, you know, one day. But um, mine would be Alvin Kamara, um, Herschel Walker, um, Le'Veon Bell, um, I'm going with Adrian Peterson. Uh, I feel like those guys all have a nice running style, nice lean, um, very quick, decisive. Um, I just seem like I, I mirror my game after those guys. Which Georgia football coach is most likely to emerge from a WWF cage match as the winner? Uh, I have to say Coach Root. Uh, I feel like he's very, very quick on his feet. He's very talented for the size he is. Um, like, I want to say he's about 350, but got feet like like a, a running back. He got hands, great hands. Um, you know, he's very, very talented for his size. I feel like that would be an easy one for him. Yeah, I, I would say Coach Root, too. Um... He just has that dog in him. Uh, you can tell how he interacts in practice and the passion he brings with it. That you can tell he's gonna he's gonna go all in with it. So I got Coach Luke. Oh, okay. Which Georgia football coach is most likely to put the pads on for a Georgia scrimmage? Uh, I will, me personally, I, I would say Coach Hank. Uh, he he still looks like he has the you know he's, he still is like an NFL receiver. So I'll say Coach Hank. I'm gonna say Coach Scott. Coach Scott be down there at the defensive line and getting in the position that's done and showing them techniques on how to do things still, get his hands in the ground. You know, I feel like Coach Scott would be one of the ones to be hyped to get back in the past. Which Georgia football coach is most likely to perform on Dancing with the Stars? I'm gonna have to get out on the Kirby. Um <laughs> I don't think any other coach on the staff uh, dances, to be honest. Um, I did have a story seeing Kirby dance before, so I'm going with Kirby. Uh, for me, I'll probably say uh, Coach Kirby, too. He just looks like one of the one of the coaches that would, you know, just go for it, just 
you know, not even be embarrassed or anything, just have fun with it. So I, I'll say for Kirby. Mm -hmm. Which Georgia football coach is most likely to drive over 120 miles per hour? I'm going Coach Hankin on that one. Um, he got a nice little Benz. I don't know if he you know push it to the limit like that, but I feel like it, it could you know pick up real fast. So I feel like he the type to do the dash. For me, I would say it's a tie between Coach Hank and Coach Adai. Both of those, I can see them, you know, slapping a good tune while, you know, not even feel like you flying, just feel like you cruising. Yeah. I feel like both of those coaches, you know, they could both fit that one. Which Georgia football coach would be most likely to sign up for a trip on a spaceship? Um, I'm going Coach Munkin. Um, <laughs> Coach Munkin, uh, I'd say he, he been through a lot. From what I can tell, um, and just getting away and getting away from people, I think he, he would enjoy that a lot and just to clear his mind and stuff like that. So, honestly, Coach Mark. Um, for me, I would probably say Coach Scott, just for the fact that he gonna, he gonna talk himself into doing it. You know, he's a real motivational person. So if somebody tells him he's gonna do it, he gonna talk himself into doing it. Which Georgia football coach is most likely to be a Hall of Fame head coach one day? Dale McGee. I get to him. He, he, he do a lot of great recruiting, especially when it comes to the running back position. Um, he's a great recruiter. You know, he, he, he's not only getting guys in the running back position, but like other positions as well. So like, he knows what he's doing when it comes to that. So Dale McGee. I'll say Coach McGee as well. Um, he knows how to get the tools he needs to. You know, like Kenny said, he doesn't just recruit running backs. He's able to get, you know, other positions. And uh, you can tell in the meetings and just by, you know, the way he goes about things that he knows a lot about this game. And um, he has the ability to, you know, take over a program. So I'll say Coach McGee. I think you guys just took the lead in the running back competition tonight. <laughs>